When Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, their forces seemed invincible. Never before had Americans felt so threatened. From across the nation, President Franklin D. Roosevelt was inundated with novel ideas and offers of help. Some were very unusual indeed. Throughout the history of warfare, all kinds of animals have been used, and in 1942, a new species was added to the list. Bats. The idea sounds simple. Take a million bats, attach an incendiary bomb into each one, release them over Japan, and watch the massive conflagration and destruction of a city. The reaction of people who hear my story of the bat bomb is, what? The inference being, uh, this guy is trying to pull my leg, <laughs> you know? A leg pull it was not, but it seemed a crazy way to fight a war, especially to those invited to work on the program. One was a 17-year-old biology student called Jack Kufer. One afternoon, I was in the lab, and this Santa Claus kind of looking man with sparkling eyes and rosy cheeks came into the lab and then told about his idea of using bats to carry incendiary bombs into Japanese cities. <laughs> Crazy idea. The man with rosy cheeks was Doc Little Adams, a Pennsylvanian dentist with a flair for inventions. There were four reasons why Adams thought this extraordinary idea might work. Bats can carry their young, sometimes two or three of them suggesting they would be strong enough to carry a small bomb. They can be induced to hibernate, which meant they could easily be handled. During daylight hours, they seek out darkness, roofs and attics, cracks and crevices in which to roost. Above all, there were millions and millions of them freely available in bat caves across America. Doc Adams' theories were sound, but to progress the idea, he needed to persuade the government to provide the money and personnel. Not an easy task for a dentist with no military experience. What was needed was a contact in high places. By chance, Doc Adams was a good friend of First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. On January 12, 1942, Adams put his ideas down onto paper and took it to the White House. President Roosevelt was kind enough to look at his paper and wrote to his, uh, to his uh, aide, who was William Donovan. He wrote on his note, have a look at this, Bill. This man is not a nut. If a million bats carrying incendiaries really could be released over Japan, the results could be devastating. One target was the city of Osaka in Japan's industrial heartland. The top secret plan, codenamed Project X-Ray, was given a cautious green light. General Hap Arnold asked Doc Adams to put the plan into action. Adams recruited a team of helpers. The team headed for the bat caves of Texas and New Mexico. They needed to find out exactly what the bats could do and how to handle them. Which bat was best suited to carry a bomb? There were millions of bats in every cave, and they came in many different shapes and sizes. But there was only one that could be seriously considered for the project, and that was the Mexican freetail. It wasn't particularly big, but there were millions of them. So this is a Mexican freetail bat. This is the one, the species that's so abundant at Carlsbad Caverns and most of the bat uh, areas in the southwestern United States. Catching enough bats was easy. Inducing them to hibernate by cooling the air temperature was straightforward. But making an effective incendiary device that the bats could carry was much more of a challenge. The average Mexican freetail weighed barely half an ounce. Tests showed that it could carry slightly more than its own body weight. But the smallest incendiary device available at the time weighed two pounds. A weight 30 times greater than the bat could possibly carry.
One of America's top scientists, Harvard chemist Louis Pfizer, was appointed to the project. His task, to design a device small enough for a bat to carry, yet powerful enough to set fire to a building. His idea was to apply something he'd invented called napalm, which is jelly gasoline. It's a mixture of gasoline and, and liquid soap, in effect. It's compact. It's relatively lightweight. It's reliable, and once you set it off, it's going to burn very fiercely. But beyond that, once this jelly gasoline gets hot, it will also flow, which means you can get into crevices and under roofs and down partitions and so on. So for the bat bomb, it's the perfect explosive. To carry the napalm, Pfizer developed a tiny celluloid capsule. It included a time delay fuse, but remarkably still weighed less than an ounce. The bomb would be attached by means of a surgical clip here to the skin of the chest of the bat. So it would be just suspended under it, sort of like this. And that little bomb was so effective that you could lay it on a solid plank, like a 12 by 12 plank of wood, and ignite it, and it would start the wood on fire. No kindling required. Just how effective became apparent during tests at Carlsbad Army Airfield, New Mexico. Some bats carrying live incendiaries escaped, and within minutes, the base was in flames. For everybody's safety, the bats needed to be kept in a state of hibernation, while the incendiaries were attached and for the journey to the target. The sleeping bats couldn't just be dropped from a plane because they would simply crash to the ground. For the bats to be delivered effectively, they would need time to emerge from hibernation and a safe platform from which to fly off and find a building to roost in. Doc Adams came up with the answer by designing this ingenious purpose-built bat bomb. 1,040 bats stacked onto 26 trays were placed into a five-foot bomb-shaped container. On each tray, there were 40 separate compartments, one for each bat. The bomb would be dropped from 5,000 feet with the descent carefully controlled. A parachute would open at 1,000 feet. Simultaneously, the outer casing of the bomb would fall away. The trays opened like an accordion, each tray joined to the next by cord. The bats dropped onto the tray below. The trays then floated slowly to earth, allowing the bats time to wake up. As they flew off, each bat pulled a hair-thin wire connecting the bomb to the tray. The incendiary was now primed to go off in 30 minutes. On December 15, 1943, the bat bomb was tested at Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. A Japanese-style village was constructed in the desert to see whether the bats would take shelter in roofs and attics as was hoped. The bats performed perfectly. The military were impressed. And here's what they wrote. It is concluded that the bat bomb is an effective weapon. Ta-da! The bat bomb was given official approval in December 1943. It was to be put into operation against the Japanese in September the following year. But on February 16, 1944, came news that no one was expecting. The project was canceled. Nobody could explain why. Naturally, we were disappointed. We would have liked to have seen it happen because we hoped it would have helped to end the war quickly. But a quicker way to end the war had already been found. The atomic bomb rendered the bat bomb obsolete before it could be put into action. The war was over for Doc Adams and his team, but across America, the search for weird ways to gain an advantage over the enemy never stopped.